presentation uh, from uh, India is about uh, Orissa. So we have two presenters. So I think we can then take advantage of this, and you will have 20 minutes for that. I, I, I think you accept that. The presentation is on in an innovative approach to preparing a subnational climate change action plan, the case of Orisa. And uh, uh, the presenters are Mr. Upendra Behera, who is the principal secretary in the Home Department of the Government of Orisa. He was formerly principal secretary department of Forest and Environment, where he led the preparation of the state climate change action plan. He has extensive experience in the Indian administrative service, having served in various capacities, including managing director of disaster mitigation authority. Mutu Kumaramani is a senior, the other presenter, is a senior environment economist in the Sustainable Development Department of the World Bank South Asia region based in Delhi. He primarily works on climate change mitigation and adaptation issues in India. Prior to moving to Delhi, he was in the Environment Department leading the World Bank's work on assessing environmental implications of development policy reforms. Mani has a PhD and MA, a Master's in Economics from the University of Maryland. Well, gentlemen, please. Uh, our presentation will be in two parts. Initially, I will cover uh, some of the aspects, particularly from the state point of view. And uh, the second part will be presented by uh, Dr. Mani from the World Bank. So uh, let me give you a brief background of the state. Uh, you are familiar with the location of India, so I have not, uh, I'm sorry, I have not uh, placed India in the world map. But I have placed the state in the India map. It is on the eastern coast of uh, India. Uh, some of the basic features of this state is that it is very rich in mineral resources. Why I am saying rich in mineral resources is that it has direct uh, impact on the climate change in the greenhouse gas emission. Because since we have a large reserve of uh, minerals, you are bound to have mineral-based industries, uh, which will. We already have a concentration of mineral-based industries, and we are going to have many more industries, particularly in the steel, aluminum, and power plants in the years to come. We have 26 percent of the country's coal reserve, 24 percent of the country's iron ore reserve. Bauxite, we are 70 percent, nickel 95 percent, chromium 98 percent. We have a large uh, area under forest cover. Forest co our forest land is 38 percent. About 58,000 uh, square kilometer of land is uh, forest land. We have a long coastline of 480 kilometers. In spite of all the resources, we have not done enough of development. A large percentage of our people live below poverty line still. So as I said, 480 kilometers of coastline that is subject to climate mediated uh, cyclone and uh, coastal erosion. Then over 85 percent of the state population depends on climate sensitive sectors for livelihoods such as agriculture, fisheries, forestry. Almost 60 percent of the land is uh, rain-fed uh, agriculture with water dependent crops like rice as the main crop. Then 80 percent of the annual rainfall comes within uh, two to three percent, two to three months of the monsoon season. Then we are perpetually subjected to baggage of flood and cyclone. Every alternate year almost we have either a flood or a cyclone. In fact, more frequently than that. And uh, naturally, so we have a issue of food insecurity. Prevalence of malaria is uh, common in this uh, state. And uh, 
38 percent, as I said, is a forest cover. So, we have a large population depending on the forest for their livelihood. We have, as I said, potential for mineral based industries, particularly steel, aluminum, cement, which contribute to very large percentage of greenhouse gases. And power plants, thanks to the large coal reserve, today we have only 2,800 megawatt of thermal power generation, which is in the next uh, five to seven years, it is going to increase to 60,000 megawatt. In fact, uh, there are proposals of investment of that order already. So these are some of the, like all, as I said, drought, flood, and cyclone state is uh, vulnerable to all three. So India's, our national climate change position, let me say a few words on that. India accounts for 4% of the global emissions. As it is compared to low compared to China and US, which contribute 25 percent each. India is among the lowest per capita emitter today, on only 1.5 ton carbon equivalent per capita per year, as compared to 20 in the US and uh, 10 in Europe, uh, far higher in Australia or places like that. China is four. Our India's energy intensity, that is measured as a CO2 equivalent per unit of GDP, that is currently at the world average level, but it is declining steadily. We still have, in the development index front, we still have 400 million people without access to lifeline electricity, so we have a long way to go in the development front. We support uh, Copenhagen Accord, and uh, we have made a voluntary declaration to reduce the emission intensity of GDP by 20 to 25 percent uh, by the year 2020. So national action plan, we have our uh, national government have taken up eight missions on the climate change action plan front, national solar mission, national mission for enhanced energy efficiency, mission on sustainable habitat, water mission, mission for sustaining the Himalayan ecosystem, that is the mountain ecosystem, Mission for a Green India, that is a forestry green cover. Mission for Sustainable Agriculture. Mission on Strategic Knowledge for Climate Change. Government of India has also asked all the state governments to prepare their state level climate change action plan. And so it is in that process that we in the state of Orissa had taken up this uh, climate change action plan. And uh, initially, we, in fact, we have taken, we are grateful to both uh, World Bank as well as DFIT. In fact, our initial phase when we did the scoping study, we had taken help from DFIT. Uh, they did a very good work uh, and uh, we completed this exercise in about, uh, we started it in the December last year. By end of January, we finished the scoping study. Uh, DFIT had helped us in that. And thereafter, for the action plan preparation, World Bank has been very generous in supporting us, both in terms of finances as well as technical expertise, bringing in the international best practices with their support, technical support, and our own experience, domestic experience, we have been able to prepare this action plan. We had a high level, I'll just go through the process quickly so that uh, uh, you appreciate the kind of effort that has gone in, the kind of consultation we have uh, um, involved, the kind of involvement, the broad-based involvement that has been, that has gone into this process of preparing the climate change action plan. In fact, uh, this high-level committee was chaired by the chief secretary of the state with the development commission as a member, and the secretaries of all these departments, agriculture, fisheries, animal resource development, forestry and environment, industry, steel mines, energy, commercial transport, revenue and disaster management, health and family welfare, water resources. All these department secretaries were involved in the high-level committee. Then we identify 11 sectors for action. These are agriculture, then forest fisheries and animal resource development, coasts and disasters, energy, forests, health, industry, mining, transport, urban planning, and water. These 11 areas we identified for our action plan, and we so we constituted 11 sectoral groups headed by the secretaries of the concerned departments for preparing the sectoral plans. In each sectoral group, we had sectoral experts. First, then we had a convener. A convener, again, as uh, secretary of the forest and environment department, I was the convener of the 
uh, state plan. So I, from my own department, I appointed conveners to work in each of the uh, areas so that I also had control over them so that they stuck to some kind of a timeline. While the nodal officers were there from the concerned departments, like let us say water resource sector, water sector, the nodal officer was from that department, whereas I put one of my officer and my uh, department officer to act as the convener so that there is a link between that department and the central body. Then each uh, department had uh, five to ten uh, members. Altogether, about 100 members were associated in this process. Then we had intersectoral groups also. It was basically a collective effort. Uh, and in all these groups, uh, World Bank has also uh, given us one of the technical experts, outside technical experts who interacted, who gave some technical expertise into it. These are the kind of working group structures, agriculture. Each sector had, uh, you know, intersectoral, interdepartmental participation, 11 working groups. Then stage one, identification of the actions to list comprehensively all possible activities considering policy, plans, schemes, and practices that are possibly relevant to the Orissa Climate Change Action Plan. Some sectors, they're very enthusiastic. They listed as many as 50 to 60 action items uh, some of the sectors uh, identified. But then to have some kind of a standardization, we limited each sector to 12 to 15 action points. Ultimately, we listed them. Then we did prioritization, all the whatever action plans were uh, identified, we did prioritization. Basically, type of activities, whether it will be adaptation and mitigation, scale of activities, whether it will be statewide or local, nature of activity, whether it will be research, study, policy action, pre-investment uh, pre study or demonstration project or investment project, capacity building, operation and maintenance. So on that basis, there was another categorization. Importance wise, high, medium, low, constraint wise high, medium, low. So these were the kind of matrix we generated, like uh, constraints, low, then, uh, then the importance in this matrix we identified. Then finally, we did this prioritization to outline the key aspects of the priority activities that include type, nature, description of stages, time frame, monitoring, uh, budgets, and sources. So ultimately, we found these 11 sectors that we had identified we found mitigation, energy sector had mostly mitigation actions, adaptation, coast and disasters, water and health, these were mostly adaptation actions, whereas the sent this agriculture, fisheries, forest, industry, transport, mining, urban, they had both. They had both adaptation actions as well as mitigation actions.